Yeah, um, you know, I've, I've been pleased with the progress. We had a, uh, uh, I guess I'd call a spirited practice today. Um, you know, it's, uh, we've got a lot of the installation in, and now uh, there's a brief pause in, in what we're doing installation-wise and really going through and kind of reaching back and, and uh, working on the details. Coach Browning, I think, is a, a fantastic coach with the details, and you're starting to see it show up. Uh, you know, Stanley, you know, is, is making progress, making plays. Uh, Big Rick. Darius Long, some of the some of the new interior guys, the Keeley, uh, Derek Wilkins. You know, it's been it's been great to see those guys take those uh, those steps towards maturation and, and understanding what we're asking them to do. Do you have a more clear sense of what you want to do with Luke? Uh, you know, I think it's always been pretty clear. Uh, you know, I think he's got a significant value playing every down for us. You know, he has the versatility of playing multiple positions and uh, you know inside the A and the B gap. So uh, we got a good feel for what we want to do with Luke. Yeah, um, you know, Ethan showed, uh, you know, a lot of flashes, you know, last year in, uh, you know, practice and, and uh, you know, was, uh, he's working back, you know, like he said. Um, you know, I think the, the medical staff's doing a good job of, of making sure in the in the, uh, the weight room on the return to uh, getting him returned to play. Um, he's a big athletic, um, really kind of a versatile player for us. So uh, we're being mindful of, of what's best for him health wise and, and uh, pushing him as much as we can. That's that's safe. Well, first of all, that was a heck of a play by Darren. But then Coach Browning, he was an all blue today, and he looked like a he looked like a blur across my face. And I told him I'd never seen you run that fast. And he said, Well, I've never had one of my defensive linemen intercept a ball down the field. So it was uh, we both saw something new. For a freshman defensive lineman, how big a moment is that early in practice in this college career? Well, I mean, I'll probably have to talk to him when's the last time he touched the ball, um, you know, and then we'll probably have to go through. Uh, Coach Wilcox had an extensive uh, celebration school last night of, of the right way to celebrate and the incorrect way to celebrate. So we'll have to go back and review the tape and see if uh, Derek celebrated the right way or he could potentially be on next year's how not to celebrate. You guys have had, had some, you know, inside linebackers you know Trey I think uh, I was just uh, visiting with Trey on the way uh, walking off the practice field uh, you know after we had spring uh, I think he's on about practice 24 25 of playing inside linebacker you know and is still uh, that process he's getting more and more comfortable if you go outside and, and obviously you saw him he looks like an inside linebacker he's a very talented athlete uh, we have to continue to just manufacture the reps. Uh, live situations will be big for him, uh, which is, you know, there's there's the understanding of what you're doing in the meeting room, but then there's the tempo and how fast things happen when it's for real, and that's where uh, we'll continue to give him reps and, and he'll continue to uh, develop. What do you see from uh, Kyle? Kyle's come along very nicely. Uh, he's been around the ball uh, as much as anybody, so, uh, Every production point, everything that they do in practice is charted from assisted tackles to QB pressures to tackles to misalignments. Uh, you know, we can we can give uh, uh, numerical feedback at any moment for our players. And you go back and, and you really review what he's done. Uh, he's been as productive as any player we've had with the same amount of reps. So that's that's a, a positive thing for Kyle and as he continues to develop. I remember reading some comments from you a year ago, I believe, about Chiggy and the next step for him was becoming a more consistent player. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see him at uh, along those lines this year? What do you expect from him? Uh, I have seen a more consistent player. You know, I think you guys are going to visit with him uh, today. Uh, he had a great play down. Uh, we had a, um, uh, some high red zone, some low red zone uh, teamwork today. And he had a great play on a, on a third down. Uh, really textbook on how he played the technique. And, and the best part was how he finished. So that, those are the things that, that Chiggy is capable of. And uh, I've seen a, a maturity of how he's coming to practice, uh, the way he's carrying himself in the locker room, in the meeting room. So uh, in this program, if you buy into what Justin's doing, it is, a, it is a developmental program. And you see behavior modifications. And you see learned behavior, what's acceptable, okay? And what the older guys have bestowed and, and, and really gifted to the younger players. 
and you're seeing that and we've been very blessed with some of the the talent and the people that have been in that DB room and you know that's that's when you know you see programs that are, are developed and they're mature and you're not churning coaches in the head coach you know the head coach the culture of it is so vital and who he who Justin continues to hire in that room is a reflection of, of the program and and to see the continued development in that room is, has been really good and that's what a mature program should look like and Chidi, besides the serious approach to the job, seems to enjoy the trash talking aspect on the field. <laughs> How good is he at that? And is that something that you, you put up with or encourage or, or what? Uh, we don't encourage any trash talking. Uh, <laughs> obviously, they're 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 friendly with one another, and um, you know, competitive spirits are competitive spirits. But yeah, there's not a lot of um, you guys know uh, Coach Wilcox. I just not a lot of uh, condoning or or uh, encouraging trash talking, but. It's football, and people have fun, and, and uh, you know we're not we're not extinguishing fun. But um, he needs to do it in practice, and then when we do it in games. We got to just act like we've been there before. Hey, you guys had the safety position. Frank went down the other day, but you still have a bit of depth. So what are, what are guys like Miles and Blake Wood and Hunter Ball that brought you to your depth back there? Yeah, Wood, you know, uh, has a you know a pretty good background of of playing yeah, played. Was, excuse me. Yeah, he is physical, and uh, he's got a good understanding, you know, being uh, that he was exposed to another program. He understands the, the serious nature of, of college football, and he's had a very workmanlike approach to it. Uh, he has come down. He's been uh, a good run player coming out of the – even out of the post, being a good finisher. Uh, Miles Williams is really flashing. Uh, I, I'm very encouraged with uh, where he's developed. You know, he's become a more mature, mature player for us, a more mature person. And uh, I think he has tools. Uh, he's twitchy. He's got pretty good length. He can be around the ball. Uh, and Hunter Barth, uh, Dewan Butler, both of those are, are younger players that uh, we need to just continue to, what I'd say, feed and water. We need to keep developing them. We need to keep them in the weight room. We need to keep them engaged. We need to, for them to keep uh, continuing the, the culture. And, and uh, when we get the reps and opportunities on special teams, they need to be prepared. You know, I, I, I think it, it kind of made guys realize how good we have it. You know, I think the, the separation of community and to not have the fellowship, to not, you know, you go in a, our cafeteria at lunch or at dinner and there's fellowship and people are sitting around and their phones are down and they're re-engaging. And it's, you know, that for so long in a lot of communities, they're still, um, you know, trying to eliminate that. Um, thankfully, uh, the vaccination rates at a at a spot that you know campus feels comfortable that we can be able to do those things again. But um, I think that's a you know one of the issues you have with young people not having a community because that's what football is here. Because fo people are not just Cal, but everywhere. They're from places that aren't aren't local. They're there for a singular reason to be part of that football team. And when you remove the community and remove the team out of football. You know, football football sometimes not very fun by yourself. You know, part of it is the locker room. It's the it's the meetings. It's the uh, it's the team meetings when you know coach calls on somebody and it's a it's a, a moment of levity. Uh, it's traveling. You know, it's the hotels. It's it's all the fellowship. It's all the all encompassing that makes college football you know so unique. And to take that away is then you're just playing football, and it's not it's not the same. Well, what I think it, part of anything is maybe we're, we're taking this too seriously in terms of how much preparation we need. You know, we rolled the ball out a couple times with, hey, we're you know we're not playing this team, we're playing UCLA. Um, and I know a lot of a lot of schools did that, and uh, you see how quick you can be prepared. And then, you know, I read some articles, you know, in 2031, you know, Team X is playing Team Z. It's like, man, do we really need 10 years? I realize the planning for it. You know, I get that and all the scheduling. But um, to watch people, you know, change some flights and uh, Andrew McGraw and, and Dennis, you know, we're getting a new flight and we're getting a new hotel and, you know, these are the meals and let's go. It's like, man, maybe, maybe we just need to coach and just show up and, and uh, let the kids play.
Oh, okay, that's good. Oh, warm, sorry. Yeah, so when you talk about warm pot, still, like, uh, you know, Coach DeRoyter used to say that like, he just needed one camp to kind of just put it all together. He is flashing quite often uh, during this camp behind you, your two starting outside linebackers. Is that encouraging you to see maybe him step up into that outside linebacker role for this morning? Of course. Um, you know, OP and I were visiting uh, just yesterday, and uh, he said, Coach, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this playbook. I said, well, tell me why. Like, like what's, what's different? He said, well, the way it's being presented to me, uh, I think Keith, Coach Hayward, um, you know, nothing against anybody else, but I think when you've been in a program and then somebody offers a different point of view um, and where Keith is coming from, you know, this is a – he's a great football coach, but he's, he's coaching a, a position that is not, you know, his wheelhouse. Um, so I think that really – as a coach, it forces you to look at it as an inexperienced player and you're, and you're detail-oriented and you're very mindful of the words that you use and you don't use too many words. And Keith is a great teacher and I think you're seeing uh, Oren, that, that's really connecting well with Oren and I think Keith being a first-year uh, coach at that position, I think, I think it's been a, a real uh, fortunate situation for OP. And, and he's playing really well, and he's, he's, he's significantly taking strides, and, and he's going to be a player that needs to continue to develop, and, and you'll see him on the field, and he needs to help us win games. Okay. All right. All right guys. Thanks.